What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another Dragon Champions video. This time, we're going to just start looking at different game modes. I'm going to start with the ones that are the most obvious and available at day one when you start playing, and move on to ones that become more relevant later on in the game. First and foremost, most important thing, you're going to go through the tutorial. We're going to talk about campaigns. Campaigns are incredibly simple. Basically, you have four different campaigns that become more and more available as you get stronger. The first, Dawn of the Order, quite literally, as it said, you are required to use Order characters, which are the good guys, the blue characters, if whatever you want to believe on that line, uh, to, to complete nodes. And you're going to start the game off with a good deal of both Order and Clans characters. Clans cannot be used here, Order can't be used there, but simple, right? Okay, so... As you progress, you're going to see that more and more nodes release more and more gear. This gear can be used to make your character stronger, and you'll move on. You'll occasionally come across a node with a character figure on it. These are character farm nodes. They are the only nodes in the game that are limited. You can only farm them five times, which means you can get about five character shards max a day. You'll usually get closer to two to three, such as fate. Unfortunately, RNG is always a nightmare, but you can always spend Dray coins or the in-game currency that you could buy or accrue by playing to refresh the nodes if you want more attempts to do so. Same thing moves on to clans, exactly the same situation. You are only able to use characters with the tag clans, and they, trust me, they won't hide that from you. When you go in, you'll notice, hey, where'd my characters go? Where's my Darien? You can't use them. Uh, a lot of times, some as a player, you'll get characters through random odds and ends. Maybe you'll get it through an event that's happening. Maybe you'll log in and they say, hey, we gave you something for free. Maybe you'll open a chest and inside that chest was a fancy character. Or maybe use my promo code, Tony's Gift, right over here, in order to get 10 free character shards of a character you probably haven't unlocked yet. So all of those are options for you to get more characters and all of those are potential. Sometimes you get characters. Is this character good? I don't know. The truth is, in the early stages of the game, you gotta imagine, if it's that early in the game, you're probably not getting a great character. You know what I mean? The characters that the people playing for a year have are probably a little bit better than the people playing for six minutes. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't work on them. Unfortunately, we don't live in a world where you can just work on only the best characters. You have to work towards the best characters. So, for clans, whomever you have access to in the early game is good enough, but then you want to start focusing what you can work on. For example, Rantha, an orc character, one of the best starting teams for clans characters in the game, is available at the end of the first tier. Adam is a goblin, also a clans character. Mortha, another orc. These are all characters you can start working on early and building up your team. Last, on this pool, we have Demon Invasion. Demon Invasion allows you to use any characters. You can combine your order and your clan teams however you'd like. These nodes are a little bit harder because there's less restrictions on them. As you can tell, I've only gotten this far into three, but you have access again, somewhat better gear, somewhat better characters or rarer characters uh, or multiple nodes of the same character, and it helps you out. The last thing you get to use energy for, which is a separate energy, which is this red energy, is called Runic Journey. Runic Journey is how you progress through the game to unlock runes. Now, in the early stages of Runic Journey, you are able to obtain health runes. And Northwestern comes down to where they look on the compass that you put them on. That's another video we'll go into great detail on in the future. But ultimately, you want to complete all of these relatively quickly so that if you ever are looking for types of runes to finish out characters in the future, you can go on. As I said, it takes separate energy and it doesn't give you experience, so it doesn't raise your character up, but it still gives you resources like uh, character training XP tomes, gold, and as we mentioned, runes. Don't worry too much in the early game about getting the best possible runes. Again, I'll do a whole video on those if you haven't seen other content creators do them yet, but runes are important, but not for the sake of the early game now just get a flow of the game and figure out what's going on that's it for campaigns uh, as a slight little note the major focus of the game is to build a team to accomplish a task in the early stages of the game i would always recommend you work on the order human characters and the orc 
clan characters because they unlock each other's legendaries and it really helps build those teams up. Just remember in the beginning of the game, you're really not wasting any investment in characters because those characters are helping you get to the next stages. In general, you want to look for characters that are great in the end game, everyone does, but you still need to play through the early and mid game in order to get to the end game. So don't really feel too bad about leveling up characters that aren't particularly awesome or that so and so or that a tier list tells you is bad. Um, because if you wait to get a better version of a character, honestly, it's going to either cost you money, cost you time, and, and ultimately cost you opportunity to succeed in the game. As you can see, I have a bunch of characters. Some of them are great. Some of them are not so great that I haven't even unlocked yet. And there's a reason for that. And we'll talk about that somewhere else. But in general, I won't unlock a character unless I need them for something or want them for something. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you're going to see that I have some characters at 50, humans, demons, an elf. Uh, some characters are a little bit higher. And then I have some characters that... You know, I put a little bit of investment in, level 30. You can tell by the circles around what gear investment you've put in a character, which would be uh, these pieces over here. You can also accrue through farming and campaigns and some events. So it, it doesn't make a difference. You don't need to have every character at max level. As a matter of fact, unless you're willing to spend money, it's kind of impossible and it will hurt you in the long run. So when it comes to worrying about the campaigns, Work on the characters that are the easiest for you to access, uh, that have some level of synergy or teamwork. Uh, and in the future, when we talk about specific teams, uh, you'll understand why I think humans and orcs are the best teams, even though some of the best characters in the game are actually demons and elves, surprisingly, right? And one last thing before we kind of clip out and finish this video. One thing I want you to know is that there isn't anything so much as a wasted investment. A lot of times, actually, if you track here, you end up with more materials, more gold, maybe more training ability materials or such to work on characters than you have. Don't feel bad. The game's level cap is 80 right now. So until your character is 80, all your characters can only go as high as you. So right now, the strongest all my characters can be are 51. Obviously, the higher up it goes, the more gold it takes, the more resources it takes, the more gear it takes, the harder to get resources, etc., etc. You know how it goes when you're working on stuff in a mobile game. But up to a certain point, I would even say level 60, don't feel bad about what you're investing in because you need it to get through the content. I don't think there's anybody who's going to regret having a level 50 character when they reach level 80 and are starting to work on the key characters they need. Uh, some people will tell you, just gonna sort out some characters, let's look at some orcs, that the best orcs in the game, which I wouldn't agree, are like Zera, Hard Orc, and More Doom. These are characters that are relatively difficult to get in the early stages of the game, uh, unless you're spending money. So if you're willing to spend money and obtain one, two, and three characters as quickly as you possibly can, not so much him, then great, you're in a great spot. But in, if you're not, or if you're just playing the game at casually, whether it be free to play or just you throw in a couple bucks here or there, you don't really have a choice but to utilize some of the weaker characters, Corcoran, Mortha, uh, Diesel Rog, you know, characters you may have obtained through an orb or something like that. So don't feel bad getting these characters to this level, even getting this gear to this level, because in the future, as you unlock characters like Zera, like Hordark, like Mordoom, your roster will be high enough. You'll be level 80, and you'll have more resources to play with than you do in the early game. So you won't really be wasting anything. You'll just kind of be using the characters for what you need. Hopefully that information was helpful to you. Hopefully uh, you are enjoying the game so far. And as we go into more videos discussing things like tournaments and challenges and battlegrounds, etc, 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 you'll gain more information. Please comment below, let me know anything that you'd like me to produce, maybe it'll help me change videos I'm releasing in the future. Uh, other than that, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Sconcili, and I will catch you later.